Hi, my name is Tutu Mars, and I'm one of the co-owners of Delia Weddings Events here in Chichester, New Hampshire. And today we're going to be uh, starting our videos um, to kind of provide some insights and some advice about wedding planning and wedding services. So this is going to be our first segment that we're going to be doing. And with us today, I have Ashley Hagland. Ashley. Hi, everyone. My name is Ashley. I'm the event coordinator and wedding planner here at the Delia. I also had my reception here about three years ago and I've also been in the industry for over 10 years. I actually do wedding invitations as well. So I have a really good picture of um, the planning process just from being involved for so long. And we loved Ashley so much that we had to make sure we hired her and came her <laughs> back here. So we are midway through the engagement season. So a lot of you are out there looking for venues. And so that's something that we will probably thought we should start with is, you know, before going out to see these venues, what are some of the things that to do and to consider before you kind of hit the road? Um, so the first thing that we wanted to go through um, is kind of give you three top things to think about. So Ashley, could we? Yeah, yeah. so the first thing that um, Tutu and I usually recommend is creating a rough guest list. Mm -hmm. So basically what I usually tell couples to do is create a list. Um, if they could have everyone they wanted invited to the wedding, uh, create a spreadsheet with that list. And then I have them go through, kind of narrow it down from immediate family um, out. So you go immediate mm -hmm. family, um, extended family and then do close friends maybe close mutual friends and then if you have any work friends if you have gym friends um, and then I say go back through that list and kind of start paring down from people you haven't seen in maybe six months to a year so you'll go through the list and if it's extended family that you still want to include but they live far away that's fine um, but this will help you um, get that number where you can go to venues because most venues usually have at least a minimum or a maximum guest count and then you can figure out if, you know, it will be a good place for you, a good fit. All right, and so the second thing I would probably uh, suggest is determining what your budget is. And so um, to kind of determine the budget, you have to kind of figure out if you are paying for this wedding yourself, but many couples will pay for the wedding themselves. So learning how, what, how much they can save each month and then looking what the total budget's going to be. We also suggest that you also sit down with family members to kind of see if they're able to contribute, um, if they're contributing with monetary values or if they're doing, helping you with certain like the invitations or the flowers. There are certain things that they can help out with, and um, and if they are willing to pay for the cocktail hour, so their your budget can be expanded beyond that. But to have to sit down and kind of figure out what those considerations are will be very helpful, because then you can want to make sure you're sticking to that budget, because you definitely don't want to, you know, if you don't want to pay a certain amount, you don't want to definitely um, spend too much. Um, yeah, I actually just wanted to add one quick thing to that. Um, now we're seeing a lot of couples who actually have like at least a two-year engagement just because they are the ones saving and paying. I know that um, traditionally um, back in the day the bride's family would pay for the wedding and we just are finding that's not the case anymore. That most couples are contributing if not paying the whole thing themselves. So it really gives them time okay. to save. And to save really up and then they can kind of figure out how much they can save each month. So that's mm -hmm. really great for planning as well. Um, yeah, the third thing I would say is try and make a list of your priorities. Um, so what is important to you as a couple? Um, so whether that's having a venue that has like an ocean view or mountain views like we have here. Um, one big thing is privacy, so shared spaces. Absolutely, yes. um, Here it's a private, private hall, so you're not going to have um, guests that you didn't invite wandering through. Um, but there are some like hotel venues and stuff like that where there'll be other guests on vacation and stuff like that. So just be weary of that. Right, and other activities that might be going on if there is a convention that's going on. You definitely don't want to have a con your wedding at the same time. There's a Pokemon convention, <laughs> so and that's just something to consider. Yes, definitely. Some people like to have like their dogs for the ceremony. So, you know, if pet friendly is a priority, that's Absolutely. something to, to think of. Yeah, you want to bring your definitely part your of your furry, family, your furry, furry friends. friends. <laughs> Um, wheelchair accessibility, I know Tutu always says to plan with your oldest guests in mind. Um, so if there's lots of stairs or there's lots of walking from the ceremony area to the reception, that's also important. Um, and then we have a lot of inquiries about um, people who want to bring like a food truck or something. And we have full service catering, so we don't allow that. But, you know, if something like that is important to you, that would be something you're looking for um, in the venue as well. Absolutely. And then I would say the most important um, priority would be your date. So whether it's um, an actual date or just like the general season, um, we've had hundreds of requests for the date 10, 10, 2020. So um, the people who are looking to get married on that day, unfortunately, we only had one lucky winner. Um, but 
if you come to us and say, you know, we're looking for fall of 2020, then, you know, you have more flexibility Absolutely. that way. So, yeah. Yeah, and if you're just saying if there's you're really not <laughs> sure, um, you know, just take a look at the venue. There might be where the venue might be more applicable for like a fall wedding or a spring wedding or a winter wedding. So, um, you know, it depends on the venue and what they have there. It might be more suitable for one uh, season over the other. So. Mm. And they also might have a price differential um, on their off season or off days too. So mm -hmm. again, with like your budget in mind, that's something you can talk to the coordinators there about. Absolutely. Um, and so I would probably say after you kind of have these three uh, things kind of, you know, kind of solidified, um, then you can go to the third party vendors such as like the Wedding Wire, the Knot, um, Wedding Spot, and then they have filters and what's important to you, your budget, your, um, your guest list, and then that will also help um, really refine the number of venues that you're actually looking at. Um, and usually Tutu and I, when people ask us, we usually recommend going to like three or four different venues so you can kind of get an idea of how things work at different venues. Absolutely. Um, even if you fall in love with the first one, it's still nice to go see how um, other people do it and then it will kind of jog some other questions you know, as you're, you're going through. So Yeah, and that's a good enough that you're having a, a fair comparison, but it's not overwhelming. Um, and then also being able to make a decision a little easier when you have three or four to compare versus 12. Yeah. Um, so take good notes as you are visiting these venues. Well, I think that concludes um, our sort of three pieces of advice for venue uh, searches and going through that process. Um, if you have additional questions, please let us know. Put in your comments, write your questions into us, and we'd be happy to answer those for you.